And so that way we don't fear death because I find that many people live a life so afraid of death and the preservation of youth has become an obsession with Americans, you know, particularly the wealthy. Uh, all the plastic surgeries and the Botox and the uh, you I don't you know the list, right? Uh, you you see some of these, especially the celebrity women. You know, I I just don't understand why why do you feel like you have to look like you're 25 when you're 75? It's inappropriate and it looks weird. Live who you are. Um, embrace each stage of your life. That's going to bring you the most joy and happiness. Not to try to be something you're not. Um, so uh, Some of these people, you know, I won't even name the names, but we all know them, had so much plastic surgery that I would imagine when they get to the gates of heaven, no one's going to know who they are. They won't be recognizable. So we want to live a life that is uh, worthy of a holy death. Hi, thanks for tuning in to our daily inspiration again. And as always, I'd like to start our video by thanking all of you for taking the time to be here with us. And hopefully you'll be edified with what we've put together for you here. And for this video, I would like to cover a rather heavy subject which we should all think about and reflect more often. And that is death. As I usually do many times in the past, I always want to share clips of priests sharing their thoughts about these things. And for this one, I'm going to share Father Daniel Rehill's clip here in this video. Uh, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. We don't think about these very often anymore because we become so busy. We're a busy, busy people. We become so busy that sometimes we don't even think about God or our future, our future in heaven. I tell you this to be true. I've asked people, um, especially when this time of year rolls around, and many families are planning their summer vacations. Uh, many, many uh, details and planning goes into the summer vacation. Uh, if you want to plan a trip to Disney World, you have to pick the hotel, you have to get your flights, you, there's packages, food packages, uh, beverage packages, uh, park packages, Epcot Center packages. There's so many things to pick from, right? And it could take weeks to plan these things. And I always ask people, that's uh, very nice that you have the money and the time that you can take your family to get away on a vacation. Be sure to make sure God goes with you. Do not forget about your mass obligation on Sunday, because many do. And then I say, now, how much time this year did you plan on your arrival to heaven? And people just stare at me as though uh, I had 14 heads. And they go, what? What? And I said, how much time this year have you spent planning your arrival to heaven? Have you thought about it? Almost universally, the response is no. Because, one, people don't like to think about death because it has a, it's gotten a bad rap. There's only two places we can arrive at at the end of this life. Ultimately, purgatory is real and exists. And without it, most of us wouldn't make it to heaven. But in the end, everyone will either be in one of two places you'll be in heaven or hell you'll be a winner or you'll be a loser that's it and because it's it's so important it's the most important thing uh, in each of our lives whether we know it or not because whatever you're doing in this life it's going to come to an end in a fairly short amount of time you know even if you live to be a hundred in the scope of billions of years that's nothing so we don't want to get off track. Uh, a simple, um, I mentioned this the other day, but a simple uh, litmus test for what, you know, what we want to do and how we do it is to always weigh things in light of the goal of heaven. So heaven should always be the horizon on the decisions we make. Is this bringing me closer to heaven or is this moving me away to heaven? I have to think about it. Um, I, I, I know some people who've moved to countries that had a very small Catholic presence, you know, even China. And, um, but it was going to be a big advance in their career. And I said, well, that's, that's very good monetarily, but do you have a parish where you're moving? Can you go to church? They hadn't even considered this thought. That, to me, that's very dangerous because you'd be putting yourself in a life without the sacraments that why would you do that um so we have to make decisions based on the goal of heaven 
Before I share the second clip of Father Rehill where some people upon their deathbed are scared of seeing priests coming to them, let me just briefly explain about the last things. And the last things are death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Death is the separation of man's mortal body and immortal soul. It comes to all men as a result of original sin. It is a temporary state, for at the end of the world, all men shall rise again to be judged by Christ. Thus the whole man, body and soul, will be rewarded for the good or evil that he has done, body and soul, in this life. At the moment of death, each human person is judged by God based on his conduct in this life and goes immediately to his reward or punishment. Moreover, at the end of the world, Jesus Christ will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. At that time, God's whole plan for the world shall be revealed and his mercy and justice demonstrated. Heaven is the eternal state of perfect happiness resulting from the face-to-face -face vision of God, which is the reward of those who have served him in this life. And hell is the eternal state of torment and despair which awaits those who in this life have freely rejected God and the happiness which he offers. And before the end of the world, there will be an intermediate state called purgatory. There those who are bound for heaven, but whose love for God is still marred by some imperfection, undergo a temporary period of purifying suffering. When this purification is complete, they are fit to enter God's presence and are admitted to the joys of heaven. And, you know, because of the busyness of our lives, as I just mentioned, and the speed with which the world is moving around us, it is moving at warp speed, it's somehow possible for us to spend all our time caught up in our everyday joys, sorrows, concerns, our work, our family, without ever thinking about those things which are most important. Like, why are we here? How are we to find true fulfillment in this life? What happens after we die? And we're not alone. Throughout history, Christians have seen uh, moments where they tend to focus too much on the earthly and not enough on the heavenly. But there's also, throughout history, Christians who have seen great value in remaining focused completely on Jesus. And it is impossible to be focused on Jesus without pondering these ultimate questions. Because this is why he came. He came so we could get home to heaven. Now, the church, she's constantly encouraged us to prayerfully ponder the inescapable realities of death, of our personal judgment, of heaven and of hell. These things are really the greatest significance to us and have traditionally been called, what I said, the last four things. And death being the first is an event shrouded in great mystery because we don't understand what's going to happen completely. We have an inkling, but we don't know. Now, as a priest who's been at many bedside deaths of people who are dying, the minute I walk into the room, whether it be the hospital or the hospice, I can tell right away if this person has faith. There's two types of people that you see dying. One is the person with great faith. They're lying in peace. They generally have a, a very relaxed countenance about themselves. They might even have a smile on their face. They're always happy to see me, the priest walk through the door. There's great joy in that. Uh, that's one set. The other scenario is a person riddled with anxiety, um, very restless, uh, very fearful, and they actually sometimes don't even like when the priest walks in the room because they think of that as the moment when the priest anoints them as, um, you know, the anointing for death, right? And so they, they fear the priest. Uh, you don't want to be in that boat. So what's the point? The point is that uh, you, if how you to die well is the result of living well. If you're living your life well, you'll die well, you know, in peace, in serenity, in in great hope and love that Jesus and His promises are true, and you've lived the, out what He's asked you to do in your life, and you're going to be okay. The thing about death is that nobody comes back to tell us about it except Jesus. So that's really the the if you want to know about de death, read, go to the scriptures, read about his passion, death, and resurrection, and what he had to say when he came back, because he's coming back from being dead. 
those scriptures are so important in understanding what's to come. The book of Revelation uh, has quite a bit about what heaven is like as well. But since our friends and family don't come back and tell us about it, we have many maybe wrong ideas about heaven. Um, I had a gentleman say to me, uh, all the fun people seem to go to hell. I'd rather go there. Well, you have no idea what hell's like if you could actually come up with that idea. Nobody's having fun in hell. Nobody. Not even the devil. And then other people have said, well, heaven sounds so boring. If I'm bored at mass, will I be bored in heaven? Well, you won't be bored in heaven because it's nothing like here. You're going to grow in wisdom every day. You're going to grow in, the, in experiencing new joy every day and new love every day, new experiences. There are colors we haven't seen yet. There are smells we have not smelled yet. There are um, the, just the, the love of being in the presence of the Trinity directly. We haven't experienced that, not in the ways it's available in heaven. So it's nothing like earth. And for the second part of this video, I'd like to take a little bit of your time about St. Joseph and how his work tells us about Jesus. Jesus could have come to earth the son of a politician, a priest, or even a philosopher. Instead, he came to be the son of a carpenter. God was very deliberate about how he came to earth, choosing the Virgin Mary as his mother and St. Joseph as his foster father. The choice of St. Joseph in particular had many implications as Jesus would grow up in his household and would learn his trade. Have you ever thought about why Jesus came into this world to become the son of a carpenter? He could have easily been the son of a soldier, politician, Pharisee, temple priest, or even a philosopher. And yet, he chose to become the son of a man who worked with his hands, a poor, humble carpenter. St. Joseph was engaged in a kind of work common to the poor people, that so Jesus Christ himself might ennoble it by inheriting it from his earthly father and freely embracing the same. Thus does our blessed Lord teach us that for the humbler class of workmen he has in reserve his choicest graces. In addition to choosing a trade that the poor were more readily engaged in, he also wanted to showcase a trade that fostered humility. Furthermore, our Lord came down from heaven to give us an example of that virtue which is most pleasing to him, namely holy humility. Accordingly, he chose for his earthly surroundings not the courts of princes, nor the halls of the learned but a little unknown workshop at Nazareth. This lowly workshop was for many years the witness of the humble and hidden toiling of the God-man. And God also chose a trade that reflects his own activity as maker of heaven and earth. For while engaged in fashioning the various specimens of his trade, St. Joseph was ever being reminded of the greatness and majesty of God, who as a most wise architect formed this vast universe with wonderful skill and incomprehensible power and repaired the damage caused by sin with a benevolence equal to his greatness. And so we can see how Joseph's work as a carpenter was not an accident. It wasn't a coincidence that Joseph had a humble trade that had to deal with creating things in this world, giving them shape and substance. God specifically chose to come into this world as a carpenter, telling us a great deal about himself and his mission for humanity. Well then, that will be all for the video this time. As always, thank you so much for your time watching this video and hopefully you've learned a lot from this. And remember, if there's any suggestion or feedback, please let me know in the comments below. And until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless you.